Hi, Kevin Raber here in Indianapolis, and today we're going to talk about the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I'm telling you, this is not just a phone anymore. What I really think this is, is a camera with a phone. Needless to say, I'm an Apple junkie. I work with iPhones. I have the small iPad and the big iPad, meaning the 10 inch and the 13 inch. Uh, my iPhone and all my Apple devices and uh, computers, which in the studio alone, there's three Apple computers at home. Just in my office alone, there's two. They make good products and they're a good investment. The beauty of this iPhone is we now have three lenses, wide, ultra wide, and somewhat telephoto. You do have the ability when you're doing any of these and you select 2X, if I would hold my finger, you get a dial and then I can do an optical or, or an in-camera zoom. So um, I can do a zoom that way too and go all the way up to a factor of 10, which is pretty darn good. And actually what's really amazing is the image quality you get out of it. So I was finding I was shooting wide angle a lot more than ever before and uh, just enjoying taking a lot of cool pictures with it. In addition, it has low light functions, which are just absolutely amazing. And I think what it takes is a whole series of exposures and it figures out a way to align them uh, you can go back and there'll be a link in the article to an article I did with uh, Jeff and doing portraits in a bar at a restaurant um, using low light capability. So they were pretty astounding and uh, I can make those images available for download too. Uh, this is a new thing we're trying on PhotoPXL is to allow certain images to be downloaded so you can actually look at them on your own devices at home and uh, no better way to see the quality of what we're getting than doing that. Now, in the phone app itself, you can do time-lapse, you can do slow-mo, you can do video at 4K 60 FPS, which is really nice, and uh, the video coming out of this is astounding. You have portrait mode, which is a great example of computational photography. Uh, depending on the subject, and if you're just shooting people or something, uh, it, you can shoot this picture, and then in the edit mode, you can actually change the f-stop, so you can do it wide open and have a blurred background and you could stop it down and bring the background into more sharpness. So as I'm actually taking these pictures, the images, if there's a Wi-Fi connection or a good connection, the images will go up to the cloud. And then from the cloud, they come back down to all my devices. I have everything I need. So what a normal routine is to shoot on this and to edit on this. And normally what I do is I go through my images, I use the heart, which is the favorite button. I outline what's my favorite, and then I can go in, and from there, I can do amazing editing. My favorite editing program is Snapseed. Uh, you can see, for example, here's an image before the edit, and here's a print after the edit. So you can see quite a difference in regards to being able to take the image and enhance it. For anybody that tells me you can't make prints, this is a 17 by 22 inch print. You could probably tell if you look real closely with it on iPhone, but if you're at a distance anywhere from 12 inches or longer, you'd look at this print and say, my God, that's pretty damn good. There are also the ability with these phones to shoot raw, and there are a number of raw applications out there too to edit your raw images on the iPhone and the iPad. I actually have one app called Hydra, which makes a 32 megapixel image. What it does is it takes like a whole slew of images, I think 16 or 30, and then kind of blends them together and makes a high res image, uh, kind of like pixel shifting. And uh, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference on those also. There's a whole ton of other apps which we will be covering uh, more in the future. We have Rad Drew, who is one of the columnists on PhotoPXL, doing articles on iPhone and mobile photography quite often, as well as some of the techniques he uses. I did a whole exhibit with an iPhone once called Seeing Double Being Square and not one person in that exhibit came up and asked what it was shot with. Only we know what we shoot our images with. Most of the people that would either buy our images or view our images don't give a damn. You could have Nikon, Sony's, Fuji's and Canon's, whatever you want, make a big deal out of all the gear you have. But in the end, it really doesn't matter as long as you get a good picture. I have 89,000 photographs on here and I have access to these all the time. Right now, this is taking up uh, all these images, nearly uh, 300 gigabytes of uh, photos that I actually store on the phone. You can set the options, so the only thing left on the phone are essentially the thumbnails, and then when you select an image, it downloads. So you can maximize your storage space while throwing everything up on the cloud and just bringing your images down to your devices when you actually need them. 
I go by the mantra that I learned from Jay Mizell, and you've heard me say this before most likely, is always have a camera with you. And by having that, you never miss the shot. Thank you very much for your support. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again.